This episode contains discussions about COVID-19, mental health, and quarantine. We understand not everyone is in a place to talk about or hear discussions surrounding these issues. Please do what's best for you. Stay safe, everyone. Welcome to the Flickcast. I am Chris Ulrich, and this is the podcast about movies, TV, pop culture, and pretty much anything else. And we're back, and Joe, Joe's back too. I'm so excited. Hey, Joe, how's it going, man? Hey, Chris, how are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. They said it couldn't be done, but like John Wick, we've we've come back. I guess we have. We are, yeah, kind of like John Wick or uh, you know, the Immortals in Highlander. Even though you you shoot us a bunch of times, we are back. I don't know. That's that, a terrible analogy. But. Of course, the problem with that is there can be only one, and there's two of us. That's true. That's true. So, that, so which one of us has to go? I think it's me, probably. I don't know. I don't have any desire to chop your head off. Just so you know. So. No, what's that called? The quickening? That's right. That was called yes, the quickening. Yes. Yeah. See, I, I can remember stuff, and I people always accuse me of not being able to remember things, but now I can. <laughs> darn it. But you uh, know what? I'm being really smart uh, as we reboot the podcast, or I guess, is it a reboot? I guess it's technically a reboot. I don't know. As we bring it back from the dead, whatever you want to call it, I'm actually making notes now. My plan is to be more prepared, and we could talk about what we're sort of doing with the show and why we came back and, and what yeah. we've been up to, um, and we'll get to all that. But first, Joe, I just want to ask you... Um, how are you, man? I, I'm doing well. I mean, it's been, uh, a, as we record this, it's been an interesting, uh, I don't even know how long now, four or five months at home. Yeah, um, definitely. But yeah, no, it's it, it's been really good. Um, I, I fully uh, want to say that I'm, you know, kind of on the fortunate side as far as being able to stay employed and uh, take care of my family. So, you know, what more, what more could I want, right? So... It's it's all good. How about you? How are you? I'm doing okay. Like like you, I think I'm also uh, extremely lucky that uh, I can I can stay quarantined and I can stay at home and I don't have to leave the house too much and um, and that's nice. And not a lot of people have that, or not, yeah. some people don't have that for sure. So I know that uh, it's nice to be able to do that. Um, but I, my plan was just to wait it out, and that's what I've been doing. I mean, I've been watching a lot of movies, and we can you know we can talk about what, what we've been doing to entertain ourselves. I know you're sure. working from home. Right. Yes. yes. Um, but I'm, you know, my working is I'm basically taking care of a kid. That's my job now. Um, so and that's fun because school starts this week. So that's always fun. The week we're recording mm-hmm. this. I'm not sure when this is going to drop, as the kids say, but uh, <laughs> it's pretty soon. So um, so that'll be fun. I don't know yeah. that I'll have to be much of a teacher now. I mean, it, the funny thing is he left school for spring break and then never went back. So right, it's been right. it's been five months. We've been home for five months, and it's 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 kind of weird, but I'm doing okay. There's some days that are better than others, you know. And it's I, I try not to get too bummed out about things, and I don't want to make this whole show about you know sure sure about being sad or whatever, and the world is screwed, and we're all gonna you know whatever, and that's not what we're about. Um, we have to acknowledge that there's a whole world out there, and things are happening, but it, it doesn't have to be the whole focus, and that's kind of one reason I wanted to to get the podcast back together and to come back and work with you again is that I think yeah. that there's room for, you know, that kind of context and also just talking about things that are happening. Cause there are things that are happening in entertainment and TV, whatever. Um, just not, you know, big blockbusters in the theaters and stuff, but things are still sure. happening. So, yeah. 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 I mean, I'll be, uh, you know, completely open, open and honest. I mean, I, I am one of the, uh, the many people on this planet that, uh, has, uh, varying battles with depression, um, and I, you know, I, I will readily admit that that hasn't been always the easiest to deal with during uh, being at home. And you know, like you said, it's not always been all roses. But um, you know, it, it's it, thankfully I have I have my family, and and we all actually like each other, and we like being around each other. So well, that's a plus, definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you know, I have have that where we can help each other out. Um, it's, uh, you know, I, I kind of, um, noted with some coworkers that, uh, anytime, anytime you go through something pretty serious, whether it's like, you know, you have to hunker down for a storm or I'm sure parts of the world where there's, you know, wars going on and things like that. It's always kind of like, 
it's happening where you are it's not happening worldwide so you have like what else is going on in the world or what your friends are doing or what your family's doing to kind of you know oh tell me about that trip you took oh that sounds really cool I'll, maybe i'll do that someday or you know something along those lines and and during this we don't we don't have that we're all going through this as a you know world community together which is kind of bizarre and so it seems to kind of elevate and heighten even just kind of the smallest little everyday things that normally you just kind of shrug off and not think twice about they're suddenly you know very relevant and in your face and there's no there's no escape from it right so yeah it's it, you're you know. absolutely right it's it's one of those things i've never in my life experienced this kind of thing where everyone in the world is experiencing the same thing i said experience yeah. twice but yeah. It, it's yeah it's it's as people say, you know, it's it's a strange time. It's a weird time. It's a fucking bizarre time. And, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's unprecedented. And uh, the fact that, that people are still getting on with their lives and doing it is a testament to the human resilience, I think. Yes. And, again, that's another reason why, you know, I wanted to try to do more things and I wanted to try to get the podcast going again. And we are doing it right now. And so that's good. I think that's good. And I think if there's some way that doing this will entertain one other person and maybe help them, you know, uh, for 15 minutes and go, oh, maybe the world isn't quite so shitty because these guys seem funny or whatever or whatever. Yeah. Anything like that. Or or it's helping us, too. I mean, it's also helping me. I know um, I had never really had depression thing or whatever before. I mean, I feel much worse during this time than I ever have before because it, sometimes it does seem hopeless yeah, and sometimes it does seem like you know what are we doing all this for? Oops, I just banged my microphone. That was good. <laughs> um, but then you know, there's lots of things that are positive too. You, I do get to spend more time with my son, and I do get to spend more time, you know, creating because I'm again extremely fortunate where I can stay home and you know take care of things here and just and that sometimes frees you up to do, you know, other creative things. Although I haven't yes. really felt like writing or whatever for a while either. So yeah. it's a, it's a catch 22. Yeah. Anyway, the point is that we're doing this podcast again. We're going to talk about, you know, the industry. We're going to talk about movies, TV, whatever we feel like talking about. There will be some discussion about the world and the world events because you can't not think about that now. Um, yes. But it won't be everything that we talk about because, you know, that's a bummer. So let's, you know, let's talk about the good things, too, and not all the bad things. Yeah, no, I, you know, I complete. I agree as a hey, catchphrase hey, for the show. Right. Is, catchphrase. Uh, first time. Uh, but uh, no, yeah, I, I think I kind of you know, at, at the beginning of this thought, oh, great. You know, I'll be home all the time. I'll do some work. Um, I can write that novel I've been meaning to write. I can. You know, I'll start up some more podcasts. I'll do all this other thing. And I, I, I'll be honest, for a, a very long time, I just didn't, I didn't feel creative and I didn't feel like I could be creative. Um, and so that, you know, that lends itself to part of why, um, you know, we've kind of reached out to, to each other during this. And it's like, you know, it would be really nice to kind of get back to talking about the things that we love. Um talk about the things that interest us uh, as far as, uh, you know, geeky things. Again, it would be great to have those conversations again. So that's why I'm really kind of jazzed about getting back into this. Um, and like you said, though, there's no there's no way we can block out everything that's going on. I mean, everything, you know, at this point that we're going to talk about entertainment-wise, uh, especially anything new, is going to be uh, in the context of what's going on in the world. So we can't avoid yeah, that. Yeah, but, you, you know. can't because lots of stuff was shut down and things yeah, are coming back yeah. now a little bit. Yeah. Um, and some of the stuff that we're getting on Netflix or whatever is things that were shot before. Um, but yeah, it's exactly right. It's, it's the context of things now. Um, but again, I, I would like this to be, if possible, sort of a, people can listen to it and go, oh, you know, let's again, let's try to focus on some positive things. Um but we have to be realistic too, and that's you know it's just that's yeah. how it's going to be. Yeah. But this show is going to evolve a little bit. We're also going to actually do guests now, like we talked about many times. Um, so that we'll have guests on the show. Um, we're going to focus on on film and television and things, but we're also might talk about you know D and D, or we might talk about video games, we might talk about books, we might talk about sure. you know, yeah. kind of whatever. Um, it's still a podcast about movies and TV and pop culture, but it's also going to be about, you know, whatever the hell, you know, if, if, yeah. if, if Joe, if you're happy about a book you read last week, you should mention it. If you're happy about, you know, 
I found a new hobby. Like I've been playing a lot of Dungeons and Dragons and that's super fun. And I forgot how fun it was. And it's been really helpful getting through these times because yep. every, every Tuesday night I sit down on the computer. I mean, you're not at a table obviously with people, but a virtual table and you play D and D and you get to sort of be transported to another world for a while. And it's, it's super fun and it's really helpful and I miss it. Like occasionally, we have to take the week off, and I'm like, "Oh fuck, you know." Now I yeah. miss that little. <laughs> yeah, what am I going to do little, this week? Yeah. yeah, that little respite away from life. But I'm like you. When this all first happened, when lockdown happened and quarantine, whatever, I'm like, "Oh, you know, cool. I'll get a lot of work done. I'll be able to clean the house or whatever." Um, I played a lot of video games. I I beat a lot of video games. You know, I did a lot of <laughs> super non productive stuff. Yep. I did I did work on my book, which was good, and I did finish that, but that was almost mostly finished anyway. But it's only recently, in the last month or so, that I felt like, I don't know if it's strong enough is the word or whatever. I just felt ready to get back to work, quote unquote, and do things. Yeah. So I just, yeah. so here we are. It's, it's cool, I think, so. Yeah, I'm definitely uh, kind of advanced through this in the same way. Um, and I feel like, I don't know, maybe everybody and myself included were waiting for the, you know, oh, any any day now we're going to get back to normal. And I think kind of processing through that and understanding that there there isn't a going back, that what, what happens going forward is going to be whatever we define as normal. And there it'll exactly, be different yeah. ways to do things. And I think kind of embracing that and processing that is like okay now what in the context of that what can i do and what can i get back to that i used to enjoy doing and this is one of those things um i think touching on something that you mentioned too it's been kind of heartening to see how um and i know you know restaurants and grocery stores and stuff like that are you know really small in the you know the scheme of things but seeing just in our local community the places that we like to go seeing what they've done to be able to stay in business first of all but also taking care of their employees uh, which is extremely important but also you know making it so that we can still buy from them and give them money and support them so that's been kind yeah of cool that's too. absolutely true yeah we've been trying to buy like if we want a restaurant food or whatever we'll get curbside or whatever from yeah yeah from a place down the street we just did this from a, one of our favorite mexican places a couple of days ago um and you know it's funny when you've been at home for so long that food tastes so much better i know i know it's like i've eaten a lot of peanut butter and jelly and i'm like well i want something else <laughs> <laughs> exactly and i love peanut butter and jelly don't get me wrong but it's just you can only do that you know 50 days in a row until you get tired of it so, yeah i want a night off from cooking right although so. my son can eat mac and cheese you know every day so it's not i don't know how he does it frankly but, saved uh, a lot of money on gas though which is uh, i know I, it's so funny <laughs> you say that because my car has been in the driveway for almost five months i mean i go out and started yeah. occasionally but i haven't i haven't left the house I mean, except to go a couple of places like pick up a takeout or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. basically, I've been at home, and luckily, I like my house, and it's not so terrible. Um, I don't, I can't complain. I mean, honestly, I, I can't. Yeah, I've done. I've done, it, taken a lot of disingenuous. Walks. Oh, yeah. that's good. Yeah, me too. That's fun. I mean, one of the things that happened during this is, in <laughs> it's hard actually keeping track of months and days now, but. Um, in uh, late March, uh, early April, we actually <laughs> sold our house and moved into oh, another yeah, house right. during this. Right. So right. that was a, that was an interesting experience through all of this, keeping the protocols and moving and getting movers to help. Um, and we managed to do that and be safe about it. So that may that may be you know part of what's helped help cope because it's like oh a new house and setting up everything and i've been getting some newer tech for the house and stuff like that yeah it's, so, a, it's a distractions you know. are nice I yeah, guess. yeah 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 and that's and that's you know one thing that's been helpful for me being home with my son uh, my wife still works but her job is kind of a strange job in a way is that she's basically never around other people right so so that's good um so she can work which is also helpful since i'm not working at all um, so, uh, that having a few bucks come in is nice, but, but spending so much time with him, um, it's, it's just been, I don't know, I forgot what I was going to say, but it's been, it's been great. And, yeah. and, and occasionally horrible because, you know, kids are awesome, but sometimes they're difficult. <laughs> um, yes. 
And, and honestly, sometimes I'm not in a great mood and, and that's a problem too. Sometimes I get down more than I used to maybe, or I have less patience than I used to have. Um, someone, I saw something that's, that someone wrote about how all of us are in like a constant state of fight or flight, but we can't um, leave. Right. And so we're always on this heightened level of, of, of emergency and our bodies are just like Whoa, vibrating or something. I thought that was interesting because I do wonder if that's the problem it seems like it might be it's like we can't escape this because it's around the world and we don't have yeah. any control over it etc and we have to make sure we put some sort of warning on this podcast episode about you know we're talking about all this stuff in case people get uh, affected true by because some yes, people yes. not but might not be want to talk about this kind of thing right now and yeah, again no, this is not going to be the focus of every episode this is just by way of here's, you know, we're coming back to do this and there's going to be context for all this stuff. And we're going to, you know, again, can't not mention it, but it's not going to be the focus all the time. No, this is just no, no. this particular one. So, so what have you been, what other than moving, which is, sounds terrible. <laughs> what else have you, like, what have you been watching? You've been reading or watching anything or playing anything or what have you been doing? Um, you know, I have, I, I haven't done a lot of reading. Uh, I've definitely have been watching things because, you know, one of the things I've been doing is getting my Plex server up and, Oh, um, yes. you know, watching uh, several things. I mean, one just as a quick aside, one non-technical thing that's actually something I've been doing recently that's been kind of nice. One of the things we did, we have a small backyard in the new place we're living, um, and we set up a bunch of hummingbird feeders. And honestly, in the evenings, I'll take dinner outside sit outside and just kind of watch the, the hummingbirds because they're very... Uh, I've been learning a lot about hummingbirds and their behavior because they're very fascinating to me. Yeah. Um, so that has been kind of a, you know, if you want to call it a Zen thing and that kind of distracts but also kind of pulls pulls me out of the day-to-day -day stuff and that's been kind of soothing and nice. But um, I haven't foregone, you know, watching stuff altogether at all. So... Um, yeah, I've been actually trying to catch up on some shows that um, I, I've been recording or that are available on Netflix or you know Amazon Prime Video that I have been meaning to watch and haven't watched. Um, one of the biggest ones to me has been uh, Umbrella Academy. Oh, yeah. Um, so good. I finally, uh, when they dropped the second season, decided I was just going to binge the whole thing because I hadn't watched any of it. Um, I liked the comics. I don't know why I was waiting, but you know maybe it was like, well... I'll wait till there's a couple seasons. Um, yeah, maybe so, you just didn't feel like it. That, you know, it's like, I'm, I, I'm yeah, not ready for be. that yet. It's, it's a yeah. big commitment. <laughs> yeah, I've been <laughs> doing eight, that. Eight or ten uh, episodes, so it's like yeah. a lot. Uh, you know, Doom Patrol, staying with the superhero theme. Uh, sure. It's another yeah. one that I, I binged and watched both seasons of. Um, been kind of going back and watching uh, some older shows uh um, digging out some old DVDs, actually. I, I don't know why I bought it uh, back in the day, but I had a have a DVD. I think it was a DVD on demand, too, set of uh, Two Guys, a Girl, and a Pizza Place. I don't know if you remember yeah. that show. That's where Ryan Reynolds got Ryan his start. Ryan Reynolds, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was like, you know what? This is actually kind of funny. We'll watch that. So, I mean, maybe is it that's Nathan Fillion in that show, too? Yeah, he just showed up like in the second season or something okay. like that. So that's kind of where they both got their starts. Um so yeah, catching up a lot of TV shows. I haven't watched a lot of uh, movies, although there are some. Uh, there's one that just came out, the new Tesla uh, movie, not about the car, but about the man that uh, Ethan Hawke stars in. Um, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm going to rent that this weekend, I think, and watch it. Um, is that The Current War, or is that something else? Yeah, no, yeah, it just came out. Uh, no, I'm saying there's a movie called The Current War. I thought that oh, was about yeah, Tesla no. and... and uh, Probably, oh, wow. yeah. I think okay. there's that one, too. This one's just called Tesla. Oh, okay, so maybe um, they're two different things. So, uh, And, you know, know, I got to say, with every trailer I see, I'm really excited um, at the end of the month to finally see uh, Bill and Ted face the music. Um, it uh, looks good. You know what? Yeah. I, I'm, I, I love the first two, so... It, yeah, yeah. It, it, is, it is kind of strange to see... Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter, they look older, which is weird to me because I first saw them when I was a kid and they were kids too. So now I guess we're all old together. Sure, sure. But, uh, but yeah, it's fun. I, I, it looks fun. It looks really fun. And and I'm looking forward to, you know, Tenet if it ever comes out. I'm looking forward to oh, a yeah. lot of things. Yeah. But I'm I, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to go to a theater to watch it. No. Um, no. But I've been watching a lot of stuff at home. I've been I've been binging a lot of movies, and I did watch Umbrella Academy. Did you did you find that the second season was better than the first? Cause I kind of feel like it was. 
I did. I, I thought the first season was really good, but yeah, yeah something maybe because they were, I don't know, it's almost like the acting was better, but maybe they were just more comfortable with their characters. Well, that could um, be. I mean, they played him for a while, but I do miss Pogo, though. He was awesome. I know. Poor Pogo. Oh, spoiler. Sorry. Oh, yeah, um, spoilers. But you know what? It's time travel and stuff, so who knows? But it's an interesting twist at the end of the second season, too, so I wonder oh, how yeah. that resolve yeah. that but again no spoilers but it was yeah it's really good if you haven't watched umbrella academy it's definitely worth it i had never read the comics uh if i'm being honest but uh i like uh i like the look of the show and i liked you know i like ellen page i think she's interesting yeah and uh, everybody else but you know everyone i think on that show has really i think you're right i think the acting has gotten better and just everything just clicked more for the second season the cast yeah. seems yeah. really on fire they really were doing a good job and uh yeah, it's a really good show. I, I didn't. Uh, I watched a f- couple of episodes of Doom Patrol, but I didn't. For some reason, it didn't intrigue me. And I'm wondering if it's just you know, the world maybe was like, eh, you know, yeah, I wasn't feeling it yeah. that day or something. But uh, did you yeah. watch? Um, did you watch Old Guard? Oh yeah, I did. That was yeah. That was um, that was a pretty outstanding movie. Although, I mean, if you changed a couple lines in it, it could have been a Highlander sequel. But you know, I digress. I mean, it was still still a very solid movie, and I'm actually interested in seeing uh, if they do anything else with the story because I think it could go to some interesting places. Well, I think they're already going to do another one. I heard, but uh, I hope so because it did it did really well. Apparently, so they kind of left us with a little bit of a you know teaser at the very end so i you know it would be a shame if they didn't follow up on that and give us more to the story so yeah yeah another thing that'll be interesting and i don't know when this is going to come out exactly i think um it's supposed to be next year but the snyder cut of all things um, yes justice league can you can you believe that shit that's pretty yeah next year i mean by the way in this podcast we curse now so i'm gonna say that's right i I don't care (laughs) um because the world is on fire man so fuck it yep absolutely um, yeah, but yeah, no. that looks that looks crazy. Um, I know there's they're going to have the DC fandom thing, obviously digitally or online. Yes. But so I'm sure we'll see some footage from from the Snyder cut. But who'd have thought that those people, let's just say, would have had <laughs> would have had any influence on getting this movie out? It's shocking to me. No, it's really crazy that I mean, I I thought the Justice League that we got was an okay movie. I mean, I wasn't like blown away by it i was entertained by it i thought it was fine yeah, it wasn't um, and, terrible and then hearing all these little snippets of you know what snyder would have done and how it would have been different and you know that it's been what five six years and now like you said that we're actually going to get to see not only are we going to get to see it but they're spending you know like i don't know 30 or 40 million dollars to give him the opportunity to finish it i don't i don't think they're shooting anything new but um no i don't the, i don't think so yeah I think they're, you know, giving him that to do all the, uh, you know, effects for the footage that wasn't used by Joss Whedon. And uh, it's, I, I'm amazed. And it's really funny because then, you know, David Ayer is talking about his cut of Suicide Squad actually exists. So now everyone's like, oh, release the Ayer cut of, you know, Suicide Squad. And, you know, who knows? That may happen. I mean, it's just, I don't know if uh, we hadn't gone through this pandemic and lockdown if you know we would have ever seen the snyder cut but um. no i don't know if, i think you're right i don't know if we would have because i think that's something because hbo max needs like exclusive content because they've done a, oh, yeah. a, a, a terrible job of in my opinion of launching the whole service anyway so they kind of yes, need yes. something to set them apart i mean they're hbo or they're cinemax I, I thought they were part cinemax and part hbo i thought we we're going to get like you know old cinemax shows and stuff too but i guess not yeah. um but i I'll watch it. I mean, Snyder's basically, I guess I should say Zack Snyder, not Snyder, because that sounds yeah. weird. Yeah. Um, he's basically said there'll be no Whedon footage in this movie. So there must be a ton of other stuff because he's not reshooting anything or doing any pickups or whatever. So there must yeah. be a ton of footage they never used, which means, you know, and the thing's still going to be like six hours long. So Yeah, I mean, he was talking about that, that it was going to, you know, his latest cut was like over four hours or something like that. And there was mm-hmm. even you know discussion of whether they should do like uh what they did with tarantino with the hateful eight and turn it into a mini series <laughs> um because yeah. uh, you know that was turned into a mini series on netflix but i i for one am really excited to see it i i liked uh man of steel i liked batman versus superman i mean i know we talked about that uh in previous podcasts well, it, was, uh, it was a while ago yeah <laughs> um but 
I, I just find it funny that, you know, everyone was like, you know, Zack Snyder has destroyed the DC cinematic universe. And now they're like, he's the savior. He's the one that can turn it around. I'm like, wow, how do you make that mental flip in 180? But okay. <laughs> so, well, um, it's like, you know, it's like anything else. It's, it's a strange time. So yes, anything, yes. anything's possible. But you're, again, I think you're, I think you're hundred percent accurate. I'm not sure that, uh, that it would have happened. Yeah. If it wasn't for what's going on, so I guess thank you, COVID. If you if you really want to, <laughs> you know, see the Snyder cut, you can be happy about that. But uh, I'll watch it because I'll watch oh, really yeah. anything. I'm not I'm not uh, a snob about that kind of stuff. I don't. I liked Aquaman. I liked Justice League. I I like most things. I don't. It takes a lot for me to dislike something actively. Like sometimes when I you know back in the day, I'd be like, oh, that looks stupid. I don't want to watch that. But then I realized, and you pointed this out rightly, is like no one intends to make a piece of shit. No. They just do sometimes. And yeah. so I'll just reserve judgment and reserve my opinion until I actually see it. I'm like, you know, and then I'll know whether it's terrible or not or, or whatever. Um, but I'm, I'm actually going to start campaigning for the air cut of the tax collector. Ooh. I'm just kidding. No, one I hadn't that. thought about that. That's, have you uh, seen this movie though? It's a, a no, Shia I LaBeouf. Not. Oh, anyway, it's 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 a it's on Netflix. Um, Shia LaBeouf and uh, I'll, ne- I'll never remember the main guy's name, but uh, I think Shia does a pretty good job in it. But it's definitely it's very gangster. It's very you know violent or whatever. But uh, it's it's one of the number one movies uh, on the rentals I think right now. But oh, nice. uh, but anyway, it's I, I liked Fury. I thought that was a really good movie. Um, End of Watch, I thought was excellent. So yes, he's a, he yes. can he can direct really well. It's just I don't think we'll get a cut of Suicide Squad. No. Not with James Gunn doing Suicide Squad too. No, no, I don't think. It, yeah, that's it's. I mean, we got an extended cut of Suicide Squad that had some extra stuff in it. And I think which that's I, which was better, by the way. I think. Yeah, actually, I did think it worked better. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I'm. I think we've talked about this multiple times. I'm of the same mindset as you. It's like I like most things. I. I've never understood, and I kind of don't, uh, I won't say never understood because I have my favorites and stuff, but I don't, I don't get like when a new Star Wars movie comes out, it's immediately, someone has to immediately rank that in their list of favorite Star Wars movies, or it has to be the best thing ever. And I'm like, sometimes a Star Wars movie is just a Star Wars movie. It doesn't have to be. Right. Earth shattering. I, I don't understand the watching someone well, to you want them to be it, to know. be the best though. You want them to be. I the, see. Here's you the want thing, them to though. be the one that you saw when you were a kid. That went, oh, f- 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 it's fucking Star Wars, I, man. No, I don't but because I already have that I one. I can go watch oh, that one anytime. I'd I like them all to be like that. I'm I'm yeah. I'm greedy, so I can I can go watch that one. Any, you know, well, show, tell me what you want, and it kind of relates back to a lot of uh, to me a lot of criticism. And a lot of hatred, which people hating movies and hating a motion picture director kind of floors yeah. me a little bit. But a lot of that stems from, well, that's not the Star Wars movie I would make. That's not how it's supposed to go. It's like, but you're not making it. Somebody else is. And somebody, you know, same thing with Star Trek. You know, everyone hated Star Trek Discovery, apparently, even though it's doing well, because, you know, that's not Star Trek. And, and, you know, it's Star Trek in name only. It's like, well, the people that have the rights to make Star Trek are making it, so it's Star Trek. I and, like Star Trek you know. Disco, and I liked I it. I thought, I thought Picard was awesome. I loved yeah. that. So, I mean, it, I'm so glad. You know, it's funny. I listened to an old episode of ours before Picard came out, and I've listened to a lot of old episodes, actually. Um, and we talked about our predictions for Picard, and they were all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go listen to that. That's funny. I was like, wow, I was really off, totally off base. I was like, oh, it's going to be like a Starfleet show where they do this. I'm like, no, come on. Because they didn't no. even have a name back then. Yeah. And so yeah. We, didn't, we didn't even know. Um, actually, it might have been even predictions about Disco, but I can't remember. Oh, no, I think it might have been about Discovery, actually. Okay. Because um, Picard wasn't even anything being mentioned at the time. But uh, we, were all, we were wrong about Discovery, mostly. Um, which I guess is good. It turned out a lot better than I thought that, I mean, that I predicted it would, if it had gone my way, it would have been crappy, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, which is well, a good thing I'm here. in charge of Star Trek probably. Well, I mean, um, that, that kind of gets to the point is, you know, everyone's like, well, that, that shouldn't, they shouldn't have done that. It should have gone this way and stuff. And viewing, I, I, I guess I don't understand viewing a movie from the perspective of, well, let's see if they are going to make the Star Trek or the Superman movie that I want. Yeah. It's like if I if I want that I'll just write fan fiction. Otherwise, I want to see 
what what their what their ideas are what they're doing i i i, I don't know or slash fiction hello <laughs> right i no. i'm probably not articulating it or articulating it well but well, clearly uh, not you can't even yeah it i can't even say the word but <laughs> I, yeah, I just no, no. it's just like uh, i don't know it don't judge a book by its cover if you, if you want to a Star Wars movie or a Star Trek movie to be exactly what you want. Go and make one, or you know, go oh, exactly. and and get your street cred, as it were, in the movie industry and get invited to make one. I mean, other well, than that, it's know. funny you say movie industry, though. Um, what, what do you think? What is that going to look like now? I mean, yeah, it's not going to be. Isn't it going to be streaming industry for the most part? Because I, I know there's been a lot of turnover at some studios. A lot of uh, things are changing. I mean, Disney is bringing out Mulan now in, in yep. uh, Disney Plus instead of the theaters. I, I don't know. I, I wonder if in the end it's going to be let's just release everything on VOD and you know also in theaters at the same time. Why not? And let's make whatever money we can. Or do you think this is just a temporary thing and they'll try to go back to the old model? I don't know if they can now. I don't know. And it's kind of funny because a lot of the studios that um, and theaters too that kind of – uh, spat on Netflix for wanting to make movies and debut them on Netflix are now going, so how does that work now? Um, what, what? How do you guys do that? <laughs> so yeah, Well, yeah, they, they definitely know. disparage Netflix for sure, and now they're yeah. kind of going to follow that model. But, I mean, I hope Disney releases a lot of things on video because uh, I'd rather just watch that. Although, I don't know, $30 or whatever for Milan, I'm not sure I'm going to pay that. But, uh, although yeah, that but how much would it... If you took your kid to see that in the theater, you'd spend twice that because you'd get concessions. And while I understand the concessions part and the t- everything else other than the ticket um, goes to the theater, and that's where the theaters make their money. If yeah, if you're not seeing it in a theater and it's a first run movie, hmm. and, and well, that's I know why AMC pro- is going to be offering fifteen cent tickets. I guess yes, I know our producer Mike is uh, staring at us hard right now, probably because uh, we're. Uh, that's right I, and I totally, theaters so. and I feel I feel terrible actually I should have said that Mike is also here and, and listening in and uh, would speak if he chose to but I he feels like his microphone is inferior or something so um, yeah. which is fine it, whatever but he's here <laughs> there he there is, he is. Yeah. there he is but you just um, sound like you're in the producer's booth that's see? right exactly oh yeah, it's, yeah. it sounds official um, but no I'm not disparaging theaters at all I love theaters yeah. I, yeah. I wish that I could go to a movie theater right now and I know Draft House is opening again here too yeah. and I wish I could go to a movie theater and see movies uh, like I used to um, and I'm sure a lot of people wish they could go back to the way that things used to be um, but that's not going to happen right now yeah. um, unfortunately so the the studio's got to make money, so they're not going to just sit on things forever. They're going to have yeah, to release yeah. stuff, unless you're Christopher Nolan, in which case, you know, you can't release anything. You don't care, yeah. You don't <laughs> care, yeah. I will sit on this forever. Um, but uh, so I, I wonder what's next. If Mulan does well, I mean, there's no reason not to do it because I think I think it will. I think people are going to oh yeah are going to respond and watch it, and it's perfect for the kids probably. Although it does seem kind of violent, so who knows? But you don't really have a choice. I mean, you can go to the drive-in. I kind of love the fact that drive-ins are seem to be making a comeback a little bit too. So that's pretty cool. And they're even kind of adopting the drive-in model to a certain extent, somewhat for concerts yeah. um, and things like that. So yeah, no, I, you know, I hope that the movie theater experience never goes away. And I'm, uh, I'm hopeful that uh, things like Alamo and stuff like that will, you know, come up with ways to keep it going. Um, so I, I don't think I don't think movie theaters will completely go away. I think there'll be some that um, just you know refuse to either uh, I don't I don't know follow guidelines or come up with a, a a different way. I mean, this is kind of I think we talked about something similar to this on the TV side like a long time ago that um, that the mo- the old models are have been in existence for so long with the big movie studios, with the big theaters, with the big TV studios that, you know, when you have places like Netflix and other things that come up with a different idea and actually go for it, they get derided and dismissed. And now, you know, everything's off the table. Everybody's got to come up with a new model to do things. And there's just some places that aren't willing to do that. And I think those are the ones that are going to suffer and probably go away. And, you know, arguably, maybe they needed to because, you know, they were holding on to outdated ideas and 
wanted to forge forward no matter what was going on and how technology was changing. But, um, you know, yeah, I, I, I am hopeful that there is enough that will uh, adapt and change and figure out the new normal and new ways to do things that we'll still be able to go to movie theaters. So, yeah. Yeah, I think we will eventually, but it's just going to take time. Yeah, and um, I'm not going anytime soon. But no, and, and I, you know, I feel bad for for people who work in the, you know, those businesses and people who yeah. work on set and people who want to go back to work because everyone wants to get back to work. I know, but you know, it has to be safe, and people are still going to be reluctant to go back even when it's supposedly safe. Because I, I know that the few times I've gone out of the house with masks and everything, I still feel strange. Oh, yeah. about it a little bit and I think that it's going to be a long time before I can just wander freely and maybe that's just me but I doubt it and it's just the, the the idea that everything is okay is going to take a long time to get used to even when there's a vaccine it's going to take a long time to get used to that you can just sort of wander around like you used to and have freedom right. Right. Um, without a mask although you know it, people in other countries wear masks all the time and it's not strange at all it's only strange because we're a bunch of selfish pricks here for the most part some exactly. Yes. Um, it shouldn't be strange. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't even be a discussion. You should help other people. It's not. It doesn't yes. make any sense to me. But again, that's not the whole focus of this show. And we could do a whole <laughs> other podcast about politics, but that wouldn't be fun. Maybe but, that'll be our extra podcast. Well, that's true, and that's that's something that we can talk about. Um, it, there's going to be, like I said, there's going to be changes to the show. We're going to have guests. We're going to probably we're going to do that Patreon we've been talking about. Yep. We're going to do a lot of things like that. Um, so there will be some tiers of you know of interest to people who 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 are generous and kind enough to support us like that, um, extra episodes or extra foot you know extra footage I was going to say you know the director's <laughs> cut of this episode uh, we'll things do, like that we'll just so we'll, call it all the Snyder cut so. right we're working on that um, uh, that's coming but there definitely will be guests maybe not the next episode but the following episode we're going to start with guests and it'll be a surprise who it is it's going to be kind of fun um, and we're going to you know. We're gonna we're gonna keep doing this and it's gonna be fun and we're all gonna get through this and we're all gonna get come out on the other side and everybody's gonna be fine and yeah. you know and we'll be changed a little bit and 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 we've gone through some experiences but you know at the end of the day it's still gonna be we're all gonna be okay so even I even think. the flick cast is gonna change but it's, even it's the all flick good, cast is gonna you know? change but yeah it's okay it's changed for the good it's changed for the better yeah yeah I things we... things evolve over time there's nothing wrong with that exactly and I think you know maybe this is a good shake up for some things that needed to change or evolve or or grow and you know I, you know I, speaking in, you know in my personal life you know in my job uh, we went essentially over the course of like three weeks moving 9,000 people in the company to working from home and managed to do it with very minimal problems and it, which was ironic because you know uh, all businesses have varying degrees of work from home policies and things like that. And uh, without going into the details, we had a very strict one in that we were moving away from that before all this started. And now mm. it's like, how can you can you really justify having a zero work from home policy when we've just proven that everybody can work from home, right? Well, so. I think the idea that people have to be supervised and under everybody's thumb. I mean, some people yeah. thrive in an environment where they need to be watched and supervised. There's, not, there's no denying that. But I don't think everybody needs to. I certainly have spent a lot of time working from home and, you know, unsupervised. And I don't think I'm unique in that respect. But, yeah, yeah you're right. How can you how can you say it doesn't work when it does work? It's yeah, ridiculous. Exactly. So, so yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, if you want to look at the silver lining that this whole thing um, is kind of forced, forced a rethinking of how business is done, but also how... You know, people conduct their personal life and how they interact with their community and their friends. And I don't think it's a necessarily a bad thing. It's like we said, it's forced a lot of things to change and evolve. Probably a lot of things that needed to. Um, I, I think it'll be interesting, though, that um, now that TV shows and movies are going back into production, um, and they've said they've taken steps to make sure that there's not, you know, a lot of extras, that people are... You know, you know, camera tricks that even though they're not close to each other, they can still look like that. So they're, you know, they're even, even say, you know, in two or three years, everything goes back to exactly the way it was before this. There's going to be a period of time where there's going to be like seasons of shows or a season of shows and movies where they're going to look visually different than things have 
just by nature of, you know, maybe they're, they wrote a storyline so that everyone has to wear masks or there's, you know, distant on the show. So it'll be really, to me, interesting in, you know, 10 years down the road to look at a stretch of, you know, seasons of shows that go, oh, yeah, that happened during the pandemic, I can tell. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, and maybe I'm no. I think you're right. Different. I think but, you're some. I don't know if I want to see episodes about you know COVID and pandemic stuff. Yeah. I mean, there's already been bottle episodes. I don't know. It's not a bottle episode, but there's already been pandemic episodes of some shows. Um, yeah. You know, quarantine episodes um, and, and things like that. And you know, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it'll be cathartic for some people. But I don't necessarily want to see that for sure. Although sure. I think, I'm sure we will. Yeah. Um, and then I say that, and then we're doing a show that has something to do with the past. So I'm, <laughs> exactly. I'm a hypocrite, folks. Sorry. Right, right. <laughs> um, but, I, you know, we're living it. And some things I think sometimes people want to escape. So a little of that for me will go a long way. But this is my, you know, this show is going to be my way of of, uh, of doing therapy for myself, I guess, too. Yeah. So I'll, I'll work through my problems. Um, and hopefully you will, too. And hopefully the rest of you listening will help. It'll help you, too. But... Uh, do we want to just wrap it up right now with anything? I mean, do we want to make a? Do you want to pick something maybe, or just like was something that was really helpful to you during this time? You think more than other things, or should we just say that's it for now? And, yeah, I think for this one we'll just wrap it up. And okay. uh, you know, we don't want this to. We didn't really want this to be a long episode necessarily. We just wanted to say, you know, we're coming back and yep. we're excited to start doing this again, and uh, we're excited to have people hopefully listen, and it's going to be fun. Um, and you can find us on all the podcast platforms, you know, iTunes and, and, uh, probably going to be on Spotify and we're going to be on all the, all the platforms. And then we're on, you know, social media at, uh, Flickcast on Twitter and on Instagram. We're going to start pumping up our Instagram too. Cause you know, that's what the kids are doing. We yeah, will not be exactly. on TikTok, sadly, cause that's against the law, I guess now. Apparently. And maybe on Facebook, know. but they're evil. So maybe not. It's still on, but... we're still up on Facebook, but only yeah. for, you know, cause it's a, it's, it's a good way to reach people. I sure. guess I don't necessarily love Facebook. I don't really spend much time there, but I do spend time on Twitter, probably too much to be honest. Well, yeah. But, uh, yeah. but that's where I get a lot of my news, unfortunately. So, but if you do reach out to us at those places, we will respond. So yeah, we, absolutely. We appreciate absolutely. the feedback. So yeah, we appreciate the feedback. And if anybody, you know, has any thoughts about the show going forward or, you know, just wants to shoot the shit, that's fine. Anytime. No absolutely. Yeah. Um, so look for us there and look for more episodes, uh, very very soon hopefully you know maybe even weekly we're gonna try for you know we'll try to get them out as quickly as we can and as as competently as we can you know yeah, yes exactly that's important so quality but hey, is the, important. The, the important part is we're fucking back we that's are back right. So. that's right damn it all right so yeah. for joel dilworth i'm chris lalrick that was the flick thanks for listening thank you everybody